Praise the Lord. It's me, Brother Eberly, a.k.a. Wretched Knucklehead. Um, if we turn our Bibles to uh, Luke chapter 15, now let's just jump right into it. Um, then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, So here it is, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, um, there's a crowd of publicans, sinners, prostitutes, the dregs of society, socially outcast, pariahs, you know, no good for nothing people that are coming to hear our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preach. And verse 2 then says um, how the religious leaders of the day, the, the fries and the, the, the Pharisees, the scribes and the religious leaders um, of the day, when they see this um, people that they consider uh, dregs of society come to hear Jesus Christ, they murmured with themselves, these religious leaders, saying, this man receives sinners and eat us with them. And and they, they had a, a an absolute problem with with this. And as we know, like you know, the Bible tells us in, in the book of Luke, chapter 19, that the Son of Man seeks to save them that are lost. And what better way is to when when sinners are and these if they're seeking to save that, that they're drawn to him. And some something about like what he's saying. And it was the religious leaders that had a problem with Jesus doing this. And so verse 3 tells us of Luke chapter 15, that he spoke a parable to these religious uh, leaders. And saying, on, saying in verse 4, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders rejoicing so he starts off with uh, this parable about apparently the shepherd who has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost now the the thing that at the time would be like if you just lost one when you have the 99 you forget that foolish one it's probably no good you know it's just it's going to be a pain you know, trying to get it. I've got the 99, you know, just cut the loss, you know. But this particular shepherd uh, that Jesus is describing, he he went out, left the 99 that was safe and secure, and went out for that one that was lost. And and, and notice in verse 5, he says, and when he had found it, this, the shepherd, when he had found it, he, he lay on his shoulders, rejoicing. You know, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, um, a familiar verse, it says, um, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, singular. And he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And, and notice the government, the, 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 the way of the world, will be on his shoulder it the, the shoulder is strong enough to carry the weight of of the world but here when jesus is talking about this shepherd who's going after this lost sheep and when he, the shepherd finds this lost sheep he says he lays on his shoulders plural shoulders plural rejoicing so giving this picture that it's strong, his shoulder is strong enough to hold the world's government, but his shoulder is loving enough to put on a sheep that was lost. And and, and notice his, his response. He's rejoicing. Verse six. And when he come up, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, rejoice with me. Because he's, he's, he's happy, excited, and exhilarated. Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost he went out searching found it he's rejoicing put him on his shoulders 
lovingly and he's rejoicing and tells his friend, come rejoice with me, rejoice with me. For I found my sheep, which was lost. Going away from the 99s was safe and secure and looking for that one that was lost and, and, and probably in danger and found them and rejoicing. And then Jesus goes into it deeper. He says, I say unto you that likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the 90 and 9 just persons which need no repentance. So, so <laughs> what constitutes the, the joy of heaven is when a sinner repents of his ways of high thought of God and, 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 and put his faith in Jesus Christ. And, and and that constitutes the the joy of heaven when when one sinner repenteth over the ninety and nine just persons which needeth no repentance so it constitutes the, the 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 happiness and the exhilaration of heaven that that joy when that one is which was once lost is now found. And then Jesus goes on to another parable. In verse 8, he says, Either that woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she loses one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. The same rejoice, the shepherd said, Rejoice with me. For I have found the peace which I had lost. And likewise, I say unto you, there is joy, again, that joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. So this woman had, had ten silver coins, loses one, searches diligently, takes out a, a, a candle and, and searches every crevice of the house. And then she finds it. And when she finds it, there is she experiences joy and she's rejoicing. There's so much that she wants to share this joy with all her friends to come in and, and partake of this joy because the, 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 the coin that I've lost, I found it. The same way that the shepherd when went out and searched for the shepherd, the sheep, found the sheep and we said rejoice because what was lost is now found. What was lost for the, uh, the, the lost coin for the woman was lost and now found. And, and, and it says, and it constitutes, if you will, the, the, the rejoicing in heaven when one is that was lost is now found. And, and, I, and I want us to look at verse 10 of what Jesus said. He says, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repents. Now, I've heard, when, you know, coming up and growing up when people would, you know, use terms like, oh, when someone gets saved, a sinner repents, all the angels of heaven rejoice. But that's not what Jesus says in, in, in verse 10 of Luke chapter 15. If you look closely, it says, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence. So there's you have the presence of angels. And in that presence, there is joy. It doesn't say that the angels are, are, are presenting this joy or rejoicing. It says there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. So clearly, Jesus is not saying that the angels are rejoicing. But there's another joy. This joy is coming from someone else. And who could that someone else be? Well, if you turn your Bibles to... Uh, hold your place in Luke chapter 15. Turn your Bible to Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3, and we'll see what, what the Bible says about this. In Zephaniah chapter 3, it reads, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. So we see that the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Yes, he's in the midst. He's in the right there with us. Never leave us nor forsake us. And he is mighty. As we saw in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the mighty God. Part of the characteristics of, of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and it says he is mighty. He will save. He is our Savior. 
he will rejoice over thee with joy. The same rejoicing over thee with joy that the, the shepherd experienced when he found the lost sheep. The same rejoicing over thee with joy that the lady experienced when she found the lost coin. And we see now in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Herein lies love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and gave and became a propitiation for our sins. It's not our love for God that constitutes love. It's God's love for us that constitutes love. And so he will rest in his love for you, for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should, should believe him should not perish but have everlasting life. So he will rest in his love. And watch this. Watch this. He will joy over you, over thee, with singing. The joy that Jesus was talking about was not the joy of angels rejoicing. The joy that Jesus was talking about was the joy of the Father. And when someone gets saved, you know, when one sinner repents over the, the 90 and 9 that just that don't need to repent. When one, the, Jesus is saying, Jesus is telling us that God rejoices or joys over you with singing. God is so happy when someone gets saved, he starts singing. And that's the joy that, that, that Jesus is talking about in, 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 in Luke chapter 15, verse 10. When he says, I say unto you likewise, there is joy. Joy over thee with singing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repents. This is not talking about angels rejoicing. So then Jesus goes on and, 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 and then he's directing this um, discussion to these Pharisees and, and scribes who murmur because Jesus is ministering to the, the sinners and the publicans and the prostitutes. And even fellowship with them. By eating with them. And so he goes on a familiar um, parable. It says in verse 11, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portions of goods that fall to me. Now, the religious leaders would have understood that what this young son did was, uh, was paramount of, of cursing a, a parent. Because, you know, you only get your, your your inheritance, you only get the portion of goods after the the, the the parents die. But his father's alive and well. And, and this, this son, this young son just says, Dad, I, I, I want you to drop dead and die and give me what, 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 has, what I have coming to me after you die. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 21, verses 15, and he that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Exodus chapter 21, verse 17 says, and he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 9 says, for everyone that curseth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. He hath cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 20 tells us, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. And then Jesus, when having a discussion with the same religious leaders that he's having right now, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 4, it records Jesus saying to these religious leaders, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die to death. This is Jesus Christ saying this, you know, Throwing the law at them. But anyway, we, we see that what this young son did was paramount to cursing, and according to the law, which they were under, he was to be put to death. But look what the father does. He says, and he divided unto them his living. So he gave the, the, the son who, who, who did this deed his portion. Verse 13, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with righteous living. He was living a prodigal, squandering life, just just, just bling, bling, this, that, fame, and, and just, just living it up with this inheritance that he got from his father. 
And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine. So now, now his pocket started getting empty. Spent all, all, all the, the living, the, the, you know, with this righteous living, with this prodigal lifestyle, squandering, and it ran out. And not only did it ran out, wouldn't you know? The Bible says, oh, there arose a mighty famine in in that land. So there was a there was a like a, a, what, I, a, what I would consider a Great Depression, a, a recession, a drought, a national and global downpour. Just downfall. The stock markets just crashed like you wouldn't believe. And he began to be in want. So now he's just like he he's got no money. There is an economic uh, depression in the land that he's in, and, and he got no money. Verse 15, and he went and joined himself to the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his field to swine. So he's looking for a job. He's, 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 he's you know, he got no money. There's an economic uh, recession in the land that the land is experiencing. He, he gets, he gets, goes to the, some, some guy who, a pig um, farmer. And he, he gives him a job as a to feed the pigs, and this is a this is this is a, this is a, a, a child of Israel, a, a Jewish uh, young man, and you know the pigs were considered unclean, and he's dealing with that. So could you imagine what he's going through as Jesus is uh, sharing this to the religious leaders? And he would have fain, verse sixteen of Luke chapter fifteen, and he would fain have his filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. He was so hungry, even the pig slop looked good. But look at this. And no man gave him to eat. I mean, the reason why he didn't get to eat the food, the pig's food, is nobody would feed him. That's how that's how tight this situation was. He got no money. He's, he, 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 he got a job dealing with unclean animals. And nobody wants to give him anything, not even the pig's slop. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I'm no worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. Now I want to stop right there. I remember, again, coming up and hearing people um, share this, uh, you know, the prodigal son parable. And when they would get to this part, they, 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 it seemed like they get sentimental for the, 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 this, this prodigal son. They would, they would say he came to himself. He got an epiphany. And he started just thinking about his dear old father and, 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 and how, how he said, I'm, you know, <laughs> I, I've sinned against my father, against heaven. I, I, I'll go back and, and make things right. And and I'm not even worthy to be your son. <laughs> but if you make me a, a, a servant, then everything will be all right. And we, and then we, we would hear that, and we would think that wow, he's so heroic. Keep in mind. This, this is a son who, basically, who knew what he was doing when he basically cursed his father by saying, give me my money. I don't want to have anything to do with you. When he was out in, in, in that, a, far, a far country, living it up, going to the clubs, getting his groove on. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. It was only until when things got tight and 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 then he went and worked at the pig farm and would have ate the pig's food, but no one wanted to feed him that. And things were getting tight. And it was like he remembered, yes, he remembered about like how it was with his uh, his father's house, how that even the servants, the the they they, they were living better condition than that he was. And he and, and, and he came to himself. And he's like, wait a minute. He he was scheming and scamming. He was thinking, like, let's see. And, you know, things are getting tight. He's desperate. He's hungry. His, his stomach is barking. You know. 
And he's just, and he's desperate. And, he, and he's saying, you know, I, I got an idea. Okay, I know, I got an idea. I, 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 I'll, I'll go to my father. Because he's hungry, desperate. Remember that. And he's scheming and scamming. Because he knows what he did. About what, 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 what was his father. And he says, I've sinned against you. Okay, okay. I've sinned against you, um, Father. I, I've sinned against heaven. Um, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. Uh, but but if you could just make me... See, he was, he was dicing and dealing just to get in, just so that he could be, have a roof over his head and, and food in his belly. Because things were getting tight. And, 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 he, and he says, I, I'm not even... But just make me... Uh, just, just make me your servant. And everything will be all right. See, because when he was getting his groove on at the club and spending his money, did he go, when getting his groove on, did he stop and say, you know, and think of his father then? And say, you know, I, I've done wrong. To my, I, let me just make this right. I'm, I'm going to go back. No, everything was just hunky-dory and, and everything was just all right. It's when things got tight. And look at it. Look at the knot. Look at look look what he's saying. Make me um. Let's, let's make a deal. And now knowing that, like what he did, like you know, he should have been stoned to death. So, this is the verse twenty. It says, "But he arose and came to his father." So he's making the march to his father with this um, crocodile tear appeal to be his servant. But the latter part of verse twenty. In Luke chapter 15. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. So he's walking toward, towards the house. I'll, I'll, I'll grant that. But it was his father that saw him. The Bible's clear about that. But when he was a great far away, his father saw him. He didn't see his father. Father saw him. The same way that the the, the, the great, the, the shepherd saw the shepherd, the sheep, rejoice, put him on his shoulders and rejoicing. The same way that the woman saw the coin and and rejoiced and wanted to call up friends and, and family and, and rejoice with me. He was yet a great way off and his father saw him and had compassion. He loved him. He, he, he had compassion. He saw him and he had compassion. And he ran. He's running towards him. Because he first saw him, had compassion, and ran. And he fell on his neck. So here, here is the son coming. And then out of nowhere, the father comes, hugs his neck, tackles him. And what is he doing? And kissed him. The last time that he saw his son, basically his son cursed him. And now the next time he sees him, he, he, he sees him, he has compassion on him, he runs toward him, he, he, he uh, gives him a bear tackle and kisses his neck. Then the son, you know, probably all confused and going, uh, uh, dad, uh, yeah, um, let me see, what, 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 what I remember today, uh, um, um, my, uh, father, I have sinned against heaven, um, uh, let me see, what, uh, um, and, uh, and in thy sight, and, um, mm, let me see, uh, and I'm not worthy to be um, no, Merly be your your son, and it, you know, and I was, what was I gonna say next? What was I gonna say next? And and here's the father that's just like you, you know, just so happy, so happy because you know, you know, as as and he's it's joyous. His son is there, and he's kissing his neck, but you know, probably holding him over because under the law, you know, he should be stoned to death. But he's 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 reassuring and, and letting him know, no, I, I love my son. I love you. I love you. And then he, he gets up in verse 22. He says, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. The, 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 talking about, if you will, the best robe. Bring forth the best one. Watch this. And put it on him. He didn't say to bring forth and let him put it on himself. He said, bring forth and put it on him. The, 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 the imputed righteousness. You know, he, he, he put it on him. The Bible says he, in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says that he who knew no sin became sin so that we would be made the righteous of God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he said, put it on him, imputed righteousness. And, and, and he says, and put a ring on his finger. So he, 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 he the, the servants are putting it on him. Not that he puts it on himself, but he's putting it on him. And, and, and put the shoes on his feet. Put him on, these shoes. 
the gospel of peace. Prepare. And, and and verse 23, and bring hither the fatty calf. Bring the, the if you will, the, the fatty calf, a picture of, 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 of Jesus Christ being the atoning sacrificial uh, sacrifice. And kill it. The burnt offering, the meal offering, the peace offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering. Bring that fatty calf and kill it and let us eat, partaking of the Passover, if you will. And be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. You see, he was lost, and now he's found. He was dead and now alive. Let us be merry. And now, verse 25, and his eldest son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dance. There's a celebration because the Lord, the son that was lost is now found. The one that that was dead is now alive. The same way that the shepherd was rejoicing, the same way that the woman was rejoicing and wanted to bring everybody, now we see the father who's rejoicing. Come rejoice with me. My, father, my son that was lost is now found. My son that was dead is now alive. Let's rejoice. Because as we saw in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, and I will joy over thee with singing. The celebration. And now, verse 25, now that his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the, to the house, and he heard the music and the dancing, he called one of the servants and asked, What these things meant? What's going on? What's, what's, what's all this? What's, what's all going inside? And he said unto him, the servant, thy brother has come, and thy father hath killed the fatty calf, because he hath received him and safe and sound. Was he like, all right, my, my little brother's back, all right. Did he say that? Well, let's see what he says. Verse 28, and he was angry. I mean, here's, a, here's the good news, and the response is anger? He's like, Remember, Jesus is telling this to the religious leaders just so that we keep this. And he, and he, and he said unto them, in, in verse 28, and he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came out his father. You know, the father who's enjoying himself and, and he, he finds out his older son's out there and, and he goes to his older son. It should be a, a joy occasion. So he goes out and he treats him. Son, come, come. Your younger brother's back. Come. It's celebration time. Let's, you know, I, I joy. He, he's joying over there with singing. But he's angry. Isn't it interesting? The only person that's angry in this whole parable that Jesus gives is the older brother. You would think that the father would be angry after, after all his son cursed him, but, but it's the older brother that's angry. Remember, Jesus is telling this to the, the Pharisees who, who murmur and complaining because Jesus is ministering to these, you know, publicans and sinners and prostitutes and dregs of society. So anyway, uh, where were they? And then this is he, the, the, the older brother responding to the father. And he answered and saying to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, and neither transgressed I at any time. Neither have I transgressed at any time thy commandments, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. Whoa, what an accusation. So he's saying, look, I've, I've, been, I've been obedient, I've been committed, I've persevered, I, 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 I've, I've kept all the commandments, I've been, a, I've been good, and you haven't done anything for me. You haven't done anything for me? This is what happens when, when you... you, you self-righteous and as this you know, older brother is and, and can't see the blessings uh, of the father because his father did bless him. Turn, turn, to, you, you, you the, uh, Luke, turn to the 12th verse and notice what happens. Remember when the, the younger brother basically cursed his father by asking for the inheritance? 
Notice what it says in, in um, Luke chapter 15, verse 12. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Them. Them. So he divided. He gave his portion to the younger brother who rudely asked for it. And then all of a sudden he just, out of nowhere, just gives his portion to the older brother. I mean, he just gets it like, he didn't he just get it like that. Did he work for it? Did he deserve it? Did he earn it? No, he just got it. But notice what he says. We're going back to verse 29. And he answered and said unto his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, and neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet you ne thou never gavest me a kid. You didn't even give me, and meanwhile, he got the inheritance. In, in verse 12, but he, he can't see that. Why? Self-righteous. He's looking at himself. He can't see the blessing. This is what happens when you can't see the goodness of God when, because self-righteousness blinds you. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry from my friends. But as soon, watch this, don't the mind. But as soon as this thy son has come, not his brother, but his your son has come, which have devoured thy livings with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. It's interesting when you look back um, when Jesus is giving the narrative um, in verse 13, it, it says that, and there he wasted his substance with righteous living. Jesus doesn't go into any kind of specific details of what kind of righteous living, just a kind of a general uh, um, illustration of this. It was just righteous, whatever it was. But it seemed like the brother seemed to be a little more specific when, when he says, but as soon as that this son, thy son, has come, which have devoured thy livings with harlots. That's being specific. How did he know about that? What, was he at that particular brothel and he saw his little brother? And said, oh, look at what he's doing. See, self-righteousness. And, 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 and he says, you know, he devoured thy living with, with harlots. Thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. So, and even if that be the case, that's that's why Jesus Christ, the, the fatted calf, you know, the sacrifice. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died for all our sins, whatever it be. Righteous living, living with harlots, being with harlots. He died, the fatted calf. That's the whole basis. Verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. I love you. This is the father, the one who joys over thee with singing when one saved. Thou art ever with me. All that I have is thine. Luke chapter 12 tells us, and Luke chapter 12, and I, and I love this. Luke chapter 12, verse 32 says, and Jesus is saying this about the father. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. It is God's good pleasure, Abba, your father, to give you the kingdom. And he's telling this to this older brother. He's sharing this to the religious leaders who have a problem with Jesus ministering and, and preaching the gospel to these sinners and publicans. Verse 32, and then I close. And it was meet that we should be make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. T celebration, which constitutes the, the joy of heaven. And was such that God will joy over thee with singing, with rejoicing, with having a celebration. Because what was dead is made alive. What was lost is now found. Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. Jesus came to make dead people alive. And that's the message that Jesus is sharing to the religious leaders of the time. And that's the message of the gospel, of the grace of God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. 
May the Lord lift up his content to you and may the Lord give you his peace. And I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up in inheritance to those who are sanctified in the precious and powerful, priceless name of our Lord and Savior, and soon to come King Jesus Christ. God bless. Agape love.